good job. In fact, I think they'd be great what in Panto as it is. Yeah. And I think they suit, yeah, the look sort of matches yeah, yeah, and yeah. all of that. Well, that was where I went with it. I wanted to find someone who'd be a good Harry and someone who'd be a good Marv. So, uh, I'd have Paul McShane as my Harry. Is it Harry? Yeah, the, show, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the Joe Pesci one. I'd have, I'd have I think Paul he's McShane. Marv. Oh, right. I don't know which one's which. The Joe you Pe- watched it more recently than Joe I Joe Pesci. Yeah, but fucking, there's a lot of talking goes on when I watch films with Erin. She, <laughs> if she's seen a film and then wants to watch it again, it's like watching it with really bad director's commentary. <laughs> because she'll sit there and tell you what's about to happen. Which is okay, because I've seen Home Alone a couple of times, so I'm not fussed. But it'll be a really bad habit that if she develops this trait of like, oh, let's watch a film together, I've seen it, and then sits there going, this is about to happen. He's going to get it in the head with I'm the pen. Sure grab it. Be- she fucking better have to. Um, so I've got Paul McShane playing the Joe Pesci one, and then Shannon Doyle as the big dumb one. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, uh, that, that was my three. But Jordan Lilly is definitely the baby-faced uh, Kevin McAllister for me. But, I'd, so, I'd take mine. You know, but Milky, I want Milky, be... Milky Mill has got the look. I Next mean, year's that. Wakefield Christmas do should be them doing pantomime of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> those, those are the leads. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. You go now. Excellent. Alan Kale, uh, my fellow Bratfordian, he got in touch and said, if you could bring back just one of the celebrities who died in 2016, who would it be? Hashtag Ask SLP. Well, I wrote down some notes mm. and then more people died. I know. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, it's been a brutal couple of days, really, hasn't it? Because since that's come in, obviously, probably amongst others, um, George Michael's passed away, as has uh, Liz Smith. And as is Carrie Fisher. Yeah, and whilst we've been recording, someone else has probably gone. Oh, well, I mean, statistically, yeah, absolutely. As yeah. we've been recording, there'll probably be several thousand people die, but... No, like a, a famous Celebrities, person. maybe so, yeah. Who would you uh, Who would you bring back? I'm not really one for bringing back the dead. Well, no, none of us are, Mark, um, really, but if you could have... You know, it's gone wrong when I've seen it on films and stuff. It tends to be a poor choice. Uh, well, I had written Kenny Baker as probably the one who's given me the most joy over the years. Right. But I'd obviously lump Carrie Fisher into the same yeah. group. With yeah. the, and, and that's because of, you know, loving Star Wars as a kid. And, mm. you know, even through to the end of Rogue One with, with Carrie Fisher in there. And there's a R2-D2 and C-3PO yeah. moment in there as well. Um, but no, I... Uh, so that would probably be where I would go. Maybe one of the slightly younger ones, I suppose, are the ones you sort of think of as unfulfilled yeah. a little bit. So Caroline Heard, she was in her early 50s. Yeah, Caroline um, Heard was an amazing actor, amazing com- and comedic as, actress. on the same level, I suppose, George Michael was fi- 53, wasn't, wasn't he? So, yeah. so that, I suppose I'd be looking at the maybe the younger, younger end there, um, rather than people who maybe have lived a full life. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be remiss of us not to mention... Some of the rugby league deaths this well, year. This, yeah, this Harry Jeffries certainly lived a full life. I mm. mean, he was he was close to uh, holding up his bat for a century, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, Mick Sullivan and Roger Millwood as well. Some Hall of Famers there. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then across sport, I suppose mm. Muhammad Ali, Arnold Palmer. I mean, they probably lived their lives. Yeah. But had very big impacts in, in sort of different ways. One of them yeah. humbling, and one of them. You know, making everyone rich. Yeah. But both of them really made their sports more of a, a product for the people mm. in slightly different ways, but both were very good at selling what they did and yeah. and made a lot of people rich as a result. Mm. Um, and yeah, so there's, there's been some. Yeah. Some, I think there's been some great people to celebrate who. Well, who this passed is what I was about year, to yeah. say, yeah. I mean, as much as it, you know, bring people back, and I, and I know the tone of Alan's question, but I almost feel like you lose the opportunity to celebrate the achievements of some of these people by by bringing them back. And actually, what although Rogue One already did, well, she hadn't died yet when it was made, but did mm. bring back Princess Leia in a in a in a sense, and I'm sure yeah. she'll appear again Absolutely. down the way. Yes, of um, course. But then. What, we, what some of these celebrity passings have done is given us opportunity to celebrate things that you sometimes might neglect. Like, you know, David Bowie's music and... and I, I, do you know what? When George Michael passed, I went back and I'm not, by any stretch of the imagination, the biggest George Michael no. fan in the world. But do you know what I did, of course, because my WhatsApp group's filled up with, you know, George Michael jokes. But I started looking back at some of the songs and stuff and actually, yeah. on the... There's some brilliant pieces. So it prompted me to celebrate and enjoy... His talent, probably in a way I wouldn't have done if he'd lived till he was 80-odd. 
Yeah, so yeah. I was able to reflect and look at that and go, actually, do you know what? Yeah, and then suddenly gain an appreciation for the man. If I'm going to bring anybody we back, played a, we played a, a, a died this year playlist for a while the other the other day as well, and obviously more be fair about it. But think about the the great musicians who have gone. That's well, a good playlist to have. You lead me on to the person that I would bring yeah. back, and it's nothing to do with his, his music, although I do think he was, you know, in a phenomenal band. I just would like to spend two days on the piss with Len. <laughs> I think it would probably be the way I would commit suicide, to be perfectly honest with you. That would just destroy me. But then there'd be this absolute monster rock god knocking yeah. about with a Marlboro Red hanging out of his mouth and drinking what I imagine would be a combination of battery acid and Guinness. I think a couple, you know, a weekend on the piss with Lemmy would be great. But um, no, I think this is opportunities to celebrate people's lives. And, yeah. and, and I think that's how you need to look at it and look back with fondness and, and go from there, I would say. Um, Alan Kale. As it appears, Dennis Solomona is retiring, inverted commas, to get out of a contract. What have you done, brackets, that's shareable and come to regret? Ask SLP. That's very deep, isn't it? Well, for me, I'm... No regrets, I'm, man. I've learned to, to be a person who, who doesn't regret as much as possible. I think everybody sort of... This is a bit sombre and, you know, sensible, mm. but I think every life choice I've made has led me to the point I'm at right now yes so I can't like look back and think oh I wish I'd gone to a different like a, a better university or I wish I'd tried to get a different job or mm. those sorts of things because any of those things had happened differently and I I might still be happy but I don't know it's an unknown whereas I know that I'm with Emma yeah and that's great yeah <laughs> and I wouldn't want to be without what I have in that sense oh, I know that's um, lovely but I am a very, very self-critical person. You so are. rather than like have big regrets of epic, hilarious things and that sort of stuff, I have lots of little regrets and kick myself over everything I do. That any mistake I make, anything else wrong. Like I called a bloke at work, Marcus, whose name was Magnus. You should probably let that shit go, man. And uh, yeah, you know, and, and I, that's the sort of stuff I, on a genuinely yeah. on a day-to-day basis. I, for two or three days, I was really annoyed with myself for that mistake right which is stupid isn't it it's and ridiculous. if you do five or six of those in a day it's, then well, it's you end up stupid, hating it's yourself, not ridiculous which is, it's stupid but it kind of leads me to what i think about in terms of things that i've come to regret there are obviously everybody. so i regret that i'm before you go into yours so going, yeah, you're yeah. going to make a good point i'm sure and i don't oh, want to no. step on it once you're in it i don't know i've lost my momentum now <laughs> <laughs> my biggest regret is mm being annoyed at myself so much for little mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, it, the thing, I think it comes from a place of wanting people to be happy yeah. with you, though, that was, yeah, which, yeah, is, yeah. which is a lovely thing. So it's not something that I feel you should be regretful about. Um, everybody makes mistakes and everybody lives a life filled with mistakes. Um, I try not to regret things. I try to learn from them because to her is human and we will all do things in life that, you know, will upset some people or we'll look back at and go, oh my God, why did I do that? But when you have that, oh my God, why did I do that feeling? I think that's your opportunity to go, okay, I can either ponder on this and, you know, repeat myself and feel this same way again. Or I can go, well, that didn't work. What will I do next time? And then you don't have to feel regret. You can feel like you've learned from your life experiences. Now, Practicing what I preach is not necessarily always the easiest <laughs> thing, but that's what I try. That's what I try to do. So, whilst there are things in my life that I would have perhaps done differently, with the benefit of hindsight, I like you don't regret the decisions that I've made because I think I've, I'm, I'm doing my best to learn from them. And also, at the moment, I'm the sum total of my experiences, and I'm very, very happy. I have a beautiful, healthy, intelligent little girl who is owns my heart and soul completely and I wouldn't want to change any of the things that I've done if that would consequentially change what I've got now. So, I don't know, I find it, I find, I find it tricky to regret things. If you, if you take the opportunity to learn from them, then there should be no reason to. You must have done something like 
more stupid than I would have done to... Oh, no, I'll have done plenty... Oh, I'll tell you what, I regret. I've done plenty of stupid things. I regret having an absinthe-based cocktail and then having... Oh, that stuff, yeah. ...dozens oh, more cocktails God. and then not telling the taxi to pull over before I was sick in it. I regret that. I've, I've, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. There's been mornings when I've rolled over and woken up and, and quite seriously... I think that's more what Alan was going for. ...regretted some, some pretty big decisions, but then I'm also quite certain that there's been people who've rolled over and regretted some decisions and I've been around so you know these things come and go don't they um so Alf Garnet yeah so uh Darren Garnet got in touch at Alfie Wolf if you want to get involved with him on Twitter he says um why are the pies nicer at Saints than at Wigan nom nom I didn't know that they were specifically much nicer I like the beer I like the beer at Saints more I like the Saints gold but I'm not I didn't really notice that the pies were no, the pies are nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, they have a really nice steak pie at Saints. Oh, I just think they use a better supplier. It's yeah, a pretty well, simple one to answer. It's probably a Wigan supplier. It might be, and Wigan uses a supplier from elsewhere, from exactly. Bolton or, or somewhere. Some cheapskate, some, some cheapskate variety. But there you go. Yeah, they just use a better supplier. I don't, you know, hmm? no, I don't worry about it. It certainly doesn't directly qual- correlate to the quality of rugby league being played, does it? No. So no, it's probably just some quirk of Look, supply. Look, it's, it's, it's something for them to go and do whilst they're, I anticipate whilst they're waiting for the very long to fall over the line from a yard out because that's the brand of rugby league they play this is 45 seconds more than I thought we'd devote to that question what's his next one though because this is an important well this one is something I thought you'd replace this but anyway when is Tom going to grow a set Mm. and do his 200 kilometre cycle challenge I thought you'd nip the cycling in the bud no not at all up your 10k game instead I owe people no I owe people a 200 kilometre cycle I'll be completely honest you know me I'm a bit scatterbrained with doing runs and things like that I'd forgotten that I'd committed to do this. And Alfie has very rightly drawn, brought, brought me to... to Conveniently bro- forgot, I would suggest. I don't know, I don't know. But the point is, I absolutely haven't fulfilled my obligations. So I'm going to. I've, pen- I've looked at the calendar and penciled in time when I'm able to freely do this. And it's going to be the 14th of January. Okay. So that's a weekend when I don't have um, any commitments. And I'm going to strap myself onto the bike and probably bring it in here and put sports news on and have access to you know television. But I will be doing my 200k cycle and tweeting it and... You know, making it obvious that I clearly am on the 14th of January, which is the second or third Saturday of next month. You see, you don't have any Erin birthday party or anything like that that you've not remembered. <laughs> it's going to be on the 15th of January. Good God, yes, it's Erin's birthday party on the 14th. The 14th is a Sunday, is it? so it might be the 13th. Actually. Are you sure? Oh, no, the 14th is a Saturday. Yes, yeah, yeah. so it's on the 15th and the Sunday. The 15th, right, okay. That's the one. So. <laughs> Yeah, good point. It's a good job I'm here, isn't it? Yeah, I did have my daughter's birthday party that day. Are you invited? Um, oh, fuck. We don't get invited to kids. Well, you should parties. be. I don't know. I'd I'm, I've made my, it's my birthday as well, isn't it? Around the same right time. So I'm, I'm going out on the 14th with um, my friend Sam Fantastic. and his wife, Kerry. Excellent. My invite was probably lost in the post. But there we go, yeah. 200k on the 15th of no, January. No, it's just like one couple and another couple. A couple there, yeah. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Excellent. So there we go. Go. Okay, so I continue to reap the rewards of like the alternate numbers of questions because we've got one in from oh, from look at Lance, from Wyatt Joe. You're up, um, yeah, because I'm going to do Pete Jackson. Oh, you're up, shit creek, mate. Um, Wyatt Joe got in touch with us. Hello, Joe McCourt, and he said, "If I wonder how the uh, wedding planning is going." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he will, I'm sure he'll update us. Yeah, again, I don't know how he thinks he's going to get his invites to us to like compare the day. But if he needs I'm our pretty sure he's addresses. got more professional comparing. If he needs our post addresses, there. he need only DM us. <laughs> anyway, uh, he says if you could uh, magically, if you could magically acquire the skills and size to become the master of any rugby league position, which one would you pick? Hashtag ask SLP Marcus. I'd probably go with either a centre or a ball playing loose forward. Right. Um, I wouldn't want the pressure of being the main man, so like the half back or. Yeah. Uh, fullback or something uh, like that but I would want to be in a spot that I can contribute positively both ways in attack and defence yeah. I think um, and be involved a lot so mm. plus I think if, like a centre if you're a good centre you've got a chance of getting in the England squad more yeah. and ball playing loose forwards are sort of a, a dying breed so I'd like to be yeah you know, true and, and kind of my heroes a little bit yeah. have been of that Bain, I mean, you, you follow through sort of like Wigan and you've got people like Hanley and Farrell and mm. 
O'Loughlin and stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Uh, the, the obvious and easy answer would have been for me to say prop forward, but actually, if I could acquire the size and skill and fitness, I'd probably go for fullback, just because it's out of my comfort zone. It would be something I've never really turned my hand to. And again, to contribute in attack and defence to be the sort of player that's got the skill to read the game in terms of getting on the end of stuff when balls in hand with your uh, with your teammates, but then also being that kind of strong defensive fullback. Yeah, but yeah, it would be it or would a be hooker, a... maybe hooker, like a strong scooting hooker with a bit of ball playing. But those would be the positions because they're so alien to what I'm used yeah, to yeah. playing rugby that that I would look at. Okay, Ooh. off you go.